The Phoenix framework was built with real-time communication as a first-class priority. Using its built-in socket handling and channels, we can implement a basic real-time chat application with little effort. For this video, we're going to assume that you already have Elixir and Phoenix set up. You're not going to need a database as the messages will not be persisted. This tutorial is taken pretty much directly from the Phoenix documentation. You can find all the code for this lesson and a text version of this lesson linked in the video notes. To start, let's generate a standard Phoenix application. Let's open a console and run mix phoenix.new and give our project the name InstaChat. And then let's get it running. Now in a web browser, hitting localhost at port 4000 should give us the Phoenix start page. When we ran mixphoenix.new, it created a default socket module for us and attached it to the URL slash socket. Let's open up lib slash instachat slash endpoint.ex and check it out. This code is telling Phoenix that all socket connections hitting slash socket should be handled by the instachat.usersocket module. This user socket module is where we handle all configuration for the socket itself, like connecting and routing messages. It lives at web slash channel slash user underscore socket dot ex. Let's open it up and have a look. Up at the top, we see some commented out code referencing channels. The channel rooms colon star comma instachat dot room channel line is boilerplate example code for handling messages coming over this socket. It says, send any messages that come in starting with rooms colon and ending with anything to the instachat dot room channel module. This is good enough for our purposes, so let's uncomment that line. The channel module wasn't created for us automatically, so let's create it ourselves. It's going to live at web slash channels slash room underscore channel dot ex, and here's the boilerplate. The first thing a channel needs to do is handle connections. We do this by implementing a function called join that either returns OK and a socket on a successful join, or error and a message otherwise. Let's write code that lets users join only if they try to join the lobby. Otherwise, we'll deny them. Awesome, now let's try to connect to our channel from a web browser. The boilerplate JavaScript for connecting to our socket from a web browser has already been written for us, but it's not being loaded by default. If we open up web slash static slash js slash app dot js and look down at the bottom, we can see that the code to do this is commented out. Let's uncomment that line. Now, with our web browser pointed to localhost at port 4000 and the developer console open, we can see the message unable to join with the reason unmatched topic. This is because our JavaScript is trying to connect to our socket over a topic that we aren't handling. Let's open up the JavaScript and set it to the right topic. The JavaScript file lives at web slash static slash js slash socket dot js and the code in concern is down at the bottom. This code is trying to connect to a channel called topic with a subtopic of subtopic, but we want to connect to rooms colon lobby. Let's go ahead and change that. And now if we check on our browser's console, we should see joined successfully. This means that we've both connected to the socket and joined the channel. To interact with the chat, we're going to need some user interface. Let's add places to input and display messages. Open up web slash templates slash page slash index.html.eex and replace its entire contents with the following. For this demo, we're going to keep it simple and use jQuery. Let's add a CDN version to the application layout, which is located at web slash templates slash layout slash app.html.eex, right above the application.js file. Back in the JavaScript file for working with this socket, let's add some code to hook up the HTML we just added. Down at the bottom of the file, add the following. All this code does is call the push method on channel when we press the enter key. It gives push two arguments, an event name of new message and a payload which is an object containing our message. Channel is going to send this back to our Phoenix app, so let's go handle it. Back in our room channel module, we need to handle events coming in and broadcast them to all our connected clients. All we have to do is implement a handle underscore in function. Let's add it below our join functions. We can see that we're pattern matching on events with the name of new underscore message. 
Then we simply broadcast the message out to all our connected clients and we return no reply and the socket, which is one of the required return values of handle in. And it means that the client that sent the message doesn't get anything back from our channel directly. Now we need to receive the broadcast from our JavaScript and display the messages. Back in our JavaScript file, we need to look out for new message events and update the message display when we get one. Down at the bottom of web slash static slash js slash socket dot js, let's add the following. This code simply tells the channel to look out for events named new underscore message and to run a function that adds the payload's body to the messages container when we get one. That's it. We should be all done. Let's open up the browser and give it a try. Pointing our browser to localhost port 4000, typing something into the input and pressing enter, we should now see the chat working. If we open up another tab, we should be able to see any new messages in both tabs. And in fact, any connected client should be able to see any new messages. Phoenix makes it almost dead simple to write real-time applications for the modern web. With sockets, we can handle routing of clients to channels, and with channels, we can handle receiving and broadcasting events to and from clients with ease. And we get to write all this with the power and clarity of Elixir.